Good afternoon. My name is Shanita Jones, CPA. I am your child care CPA and also your host of the Child Care Profit Strategy Community. So we are here in the 11th month of the year 2021, and this is when a lot of us get to thinking about tax time, taxes, and ways to save taxes. Now, if you are like most people, the first place that we go when we need information that can help us is we hit a quick Google search, and that's great. We like our people to be educated, informed, empowered, and impacted. However, all information is not good information. And speaking of information that is not completely good information, I want to talk to you today about hiring children. I get a lot of questions about it. And in fact, this was one of the topics that I have intentionally, purposely refrained from doing a lot of meetings, a, a lot of uh, Facebook lives and other messages about because when you talk to everyone, you really speak to no one's specific situation. And there are a few things that I want to talk to you about hiring children. There are five key pieces of information. Number one, when you are hiring children, the main benefit that we see in hiring children is not to not pay taxes necessarily. It is to pay less taxes. So if your entity is set up as a nonprofit, if you're an executive director of a nonprofit, if you have a C corporation, if you have an S corporation, or if you have a partnership with a person other than your spouse or the parent of your child, you do not, 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 not get to avoid Social Security and Medicare tax. Those are the two primary reasons why you see people saying hire your children, save money in taxes. So I'm going to repeat that another way because I want to get it clear. And I'm going to get into in a second when I get to my second and third point of why we're having this conversation today. And as I just mentioned, it is a conversation. So if you do have questions, you can feel free to post your questions below in this thread. Your engagement is good for us. You in my inbox does not help. But if you have a question, feel free to post it there. And if you would like to have a, a consultation, a discussion specific about your situation, then you can also post that request and we'll share a link with you to tell you how we can accomplish that as well. So I'm going to restate the information I just shared. If you would like to hire children in your business, the first thing that is important is do they actually work in your business? You need to be keeping a log of the time that your child is working the same way you would keep this log for any other employee. So you need to keep this information. They can, you cannot pay your child $25 an hour, for example, for taking out the waste baskets in your office. It has to be reasonable compensation. And you hear us talk a lot about reasonable compensation when we discuss salaries in S corporations and C corporations as well. The IRS wants us to be reasonable. So when you're paying this child, they have to be doing the actual job. If you have an infant, what can this infant and this toddler really do? Now, I'm not going to get into the legalities and my opinion on some of the things some of these folk are doing with these babies. I'm not here to judge. But I will tell you that your child needs to have a realistic job description, a realistic job title, and a reasonable wage to be paid for the work that they are doing. Number two, we're going to round this up to $12,000. It's a little bit higher, but we're going to say $12,000. If you have a sole proprietorship or a partnership with the other parent of your child or your spouse, the IRS considers your spouse to be their parent, even if it's a stepchild. If you have a business structure set like that, then you will not have to pay Social Security and Medicare tax for your minor child that works for your company. Minor child. Now, some of us with adult children, they don't seem so adult, but they are still adults. Minor is under 18 and for the pretenses of this discussion. So, if you have a sole, a sole proprietorship or a partnership with your spouse or their parent, that child is exempt from Social Security and Medicare until they reach age 18. Now, some of you may have a C-Corp or an S-Corp. And you may be saying, dang, I want to benefit from hiring my child. If your business is a corporation, look me in my eye, I'm talking to you. If your business is a corporation or if your business is an S-Corporation, you can still hire your child. 
but you will have to pay Social Security and Medicare tax. I speak with people every day that have entity structures and they were on Clubhouse. It's the Snapchat, Gram, Talk, Tick on a reel. And they have decided to implement some of these strategies that people have given them. But you got to remember, people that are in the business of selling information, I sell information and knowledge. People that are in this industry, they get paid from executing it. They don't necessarily get paid from telling you how to do it properly. So if they cut off or if you leave out the chat before that conversation is discussed and you don't have a one-on-one -on -one conversation specific to your needs, you could be missing crucial and vital information. They could save you a whole lot more money, time, and heartache as opposed to it. So be careful what you're listening to out here. I'm just straight up with you and I will tell you how I work, how we work. So if you have a C Corp, S Corp, you and, and if you're a nonprofit, then obviously that as well, your child is not exempt. However, there is a benefit for those of you that are still around. And like I said, let me know if you can hear me and see me, okay? And once I know that you can hear me and see me, okay, I know I can keep talking to you. There is a benefit. Social Security and Medicare is only 15.3% because the company is going to pay 765 and the employee will pay 765. That's only 15.3%. The tax on paying a child $12,000 is only like a thousand bucks um on a well maybe 2000. It's not that much money, right? So, if that child is in a lower tax bracket and you're in a 24, 25, 35% tax bracket, even if you have to pay that social security and Medicare, you're still going to make out better than if you did not pay that child but understand you have to pay those taxes now on to some of these payroll companies i have seen c corporations through adp where they tell the rep that i'm hiring my minor child and they're not taking any of these taxes out that's wrong understand they do not give tax advice and when you sign up oftentimes they tell you they don't give tax advice consult your tax professional, consult your CPA. Whenever anyone tells you to consult your person, they are telling you this because they are shielding themselves from liability so that you can't say that this person told you this or this person told you that. And it was incorrect for you. That's why we always tell you, don't take anything I tell you as advice specific to your situation unless I'm specifically working with you. Um, otherwise, I'm giving out general correct information i'm not gonna never leave you lead you wrong i believe you strong but it won't be necessarily specific to your situation another thing i want to talk to you about about hiring these children is when you hire these children make sure you keep your documentation even if you have an s corp or a c corp and you want to hire that child there are some other strategies that can be put in place that will possibly possibly key point possibly might maybe if possibly may possibly qualify that child to be able to for or your business rather to be able to take advantage of the tax free abilities by forming other entities if it makes sense the irs is smart they may not be available when you call them but they are working and they are smart and they are hip to gain and unfortunately i see a lot of people doing a lot of things incorrectly unintentionally and that's why i'm here to speak to you so, have you all heard about our Child Care Tax Readiness webinar? This will be our fourth annual one on Facebook. We've been doing it for more years than that. But this will be our fourth annual one since we started the Facebook group. Have you all heard about that? I hope you are coming and I hope you bring a friend. If you have a friend in the child care business and they are not in this group, do please invite them because if they want to access the Child Care Readiness webinar, this is where the Child Care Tax Readiness webinar will be held. Also, with year in coming, if you are not sure what your situation is looking like, are things are correct, we do have some availability for consultations. Consultations do not happen in our inbox because we like to do a thorough job and we have to be sure that we know what we're talking about and who we're talking to so that we can provide you the best service. So, if you were watching this on the replay, do please do me a favor and I would really much like you to write down one thing that you learned. 
while watching this. Maybe you learned I'm an escort, so I don't get texts. I don't avoid Social Security and Medicare from hiring my children. Maybe you learned I'm a C court, so my child still has to pay Social Security and Medicare tax. Maybe you learned I have to be a sole proprietorship or a partnership with the parent in order to use those tax-free savings. Or a fourth thing you might have learned is that even if my entity is not one that can avoid payroll taxes, the self-employment and Medicare, I can still save taxes because my child is in a lower tax bracket. A fifth thing you may have learned is you may have learned my child has to be paid a reasonable wage for the job they're performing and I need to keep documentation. So I've been talking to you for about 10 minutes and you've had to learn at least five or six things that should help you in your business because you know what? If you don't do it right and you get penalties and fines, penalties and fines are cash outflows from your business that will cost you money, but those things are not deductible. And this is the child care profit strategy community, right? So if we want to increase our profitability and our money left over at the end of the day, we cannot afford to give away fines and penalties for doing the wrong thing the right way. We put them on payroll the right way. Um, going through a payroll service, but it was the wrong thing because maybe we didn't qualify for how we done it. So again, I ask you, please drop a comment below that you learned here. If you have friends in child care, go ahead and tag them and invite them so that they can also join us for our child care tax ready web readiness webinar. And if you would like a consultation for information specific to your child care business, you can put that in the comments below and we will connect with you and let you know how we can accomplish that. Thank you so much and y'all stay blessed. Bye-bye.